Hey everybody, welcome to Building Character here at Game Trade Media. I'm Rick, and on this show we tend to take a different role-playing game and build a character for it to kind of show you, the audience, what to expect if you were to go out and pick it up or join a game of today. We are doing The Expanse. Uh, this is based off of the hit book series that then became a TV series, and it is published by Green Ronin Publishing, and uh, I just got this recently in Kickstarter, so it should be at your retailer soon. Um, so if you're familiar with The Expanse, I'm going to read just a little bit about what, the, what it is. Um, basically... <clears throat> Hundreds of years in the future, in a colonized solar system, uh, a police detective, uh, Josephus Miller, played by Thomas Jane, a.k.a. the Punisher, uh, born on Cirrus in the asteroid belt, is sent to find a missing young woman. And uh, drama ensues. Now, <laughs> um, there are many other characters. Executive officer of the Ice Hauler, uh, Canterbury, uh, James Holden. Uh, there... Yeah is involved in a tragic incident that threatens to destabilize the uneasy peace between Earth, Mars, and the Belt. On Earth, uh, Christian uh, Avasarala, a United Nations executive, works to prevent the war between Earth and Mars by any means necessary, and soon the three find out that the missing woman and the ice haulers' fate are part of a conspiracy that threatens humanity. So you're playing in that verse. Hundreds of years in the future of our Earth, we have colonized uh, different parts of our solar system, and Mars, the belt, the asteroid belt between Mars and Earth, and then Earth all have um, drama going on. So I uh, just want to say hi to everybody that's watching so far. We've got Sarah and uh, Tommy. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to get right into it in the character creation aspect of The Expanse. So with this, um, it says that character creation is done in 10 easy steps. Uh, first step is concept. It says here, consider the type of character you want to play and that character's overall role in the group of characters the other players will create. So come on, uh, come up with a type of character you're interested in playing. You may want to read through the options in this and the following chapters for a sense of the range of characters you can create and play, especially if you're not already familiar with the Expanse setting and characters. So some of the different um, character types that you can pretty much play are, um, here we go. Oh, that's drive, that's just so part of it. Um, in this, you get a, what's called the Expanse Games Master thing, uh, book, and it'll have someone like uh, an academic, professional, expert, aristocrat, executive, uh, so they have different characters already pre-generated. So I'm just going to kind of look at what they've got in here. Um, we can pretty much just, with our own imagination, come up with a kind of character concept we'd like to be. So what I did, because I like to make it a little easy for all of us, is I did put a miniature out today. I am using a Star Wars Legion miniature. But this is, I think, the kind of character I want to create. Something around this right here. Hey, what's up, Michael? And everybody else that's watching. Uh, so I want to create a character for the expanse based around what this miniature's image looks like. Uh, so in that, the second step is the abilities. And there are nine abilities, accuracy, communication, constitution, dexterity, fighting, intelligence, perception, strength, and willpower. And you roll 3d6 and you take the total number and you uh, that will correspond to a score from negative two to four. So if I were to roll 3d6 and roll a three, my ability score in that is minus two. If I roll 3d6 and roll a 15, I get an ability score of three. So we're going to do that straight down the line. So our first ability score is accuracy. Accuracy being uh, our ability to aim and pre uh, precision and measures your ability to hit targets with ranged or thrown weapons. So let's take a look at what the accuracy of this character is. So eight and nine. So on a nine, they have a one. The ability score is a one. All right. And one is denoted as being uh, average for player characters and other extraordinary people. Uh, zero is average for everyday individuals whereas a four would be considered you are a, an extreme expert or uh, Olympic level uh, in that particular category. 
Our next one is communication. Uh, covers social skills and generally making friends and influencing others. So what do we get for that? Um, 9, 10, 11. So with an 11, we also get a score of 1. Constitution is your character's overall health, fortitude, and resistance to uh, harm, illness, and fatigue. So let's find out what this gentleman's constitution is. 10, 11, 12. And a 12 gets us a 2. So they're, they got a little bit more of a constitution. It's kind of cool. All right. Our dexterity, much like any other role-playing game, dexterity covers your deafness, agility, and reaction time, affecting how quickly and gracefully you move. Uh, seven, eight. And an eight gives us a zero. So we're not the, the most agile of individuals. But I could see that. This, based on the figurine that we've selected, maybe we're a little older. Maybe our bones don't quite uh, give us the ability to jump out the way like it used to. Yeah, the system actually uses uh, the AGE system or the age system, um, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm trying to see what that, actually, that acronym actually stands for. Um, it was on here, but I do not see it now. Adventure Game Engine. Adventure Game Engine. Thank you, Leona. Adventure Game Engine. All right, so our next skill is fighting. Is your character's capability and prowess in close combat, ranging from brawling to actually wielding weapons. Big money. Oh, seven. A seven gives us a zero. So we're not quite a fighter either. Hi, Holly. Watching on the watch party. All right. Our next stat is intelligence. Here we go. So eight, nine, ten on that is going to give us a one. And for intelligence, this measures a character's reasoning, memory, problem solving, and overall knowledge. So one on that ability. Then we have perception. I'm really hoping for a high perception score because I kind of feel like this character could be a really cool surveyor or scout. Uh, is the ability to pick up on and notice things using any of the character's senses. Okay, so here we go. All right, seven, eight. Uh oh, so that is a zero. Strength. How strong is this gentleman? Uh, is sheer muscle power and the ability to apply it with lifting uh, heavy things uh, to feats of athletics. Ah, six. Six is also a zero. And anything below a six on, a, on the three die roll is going to start hitting us with those negatives. <clears throat> All right. And our last stat is willpower. Uh, measures self-control, self-discipline, mental fortitude, and confidence. All right. <laughs> oh, no. A three. And a three is a negative two. We literally have no self-control, no willpower, no confidence. <laughs> Which could be an interesting character to role play. So, based on that, uh, I'm going to read what that means. <clears throat> a negative four, or I'm sorry, a negative two is going to... Um, is quite poor, and it means, I mean, we're really going to be, be hurting. Um, in some instances, combinations of origin, background, and profession, and drive may give a character the same ability, focus, or the same talent more than once. All right. It, the expanse includes the following focuses. Other focuses may appear in various AGE systems, setting, and source books, and your GM may introduce a new one to the, to the game. Um, I do not see focus on here but it uh, does uh, have to do with the trade abilities. But we're going to go straight to origin. Um, and come back to this as uh, when it talks about accuracy 
what are we accurate in? What is our focus? Are we accurate, accurate in bows, guns, pistols, rifles, throwing? I would say based on the miniature, hopefully based on what you see. Uh, yeah, Tommy, you, you jinxed it. That's okay, buddy. I think, I think this is going to be uh, a really cool character. I kind of think of um, Dr. Smith from Lost in Space. Uh, I kind of feel like their willpower and their um, self-control and self-discipline may not be quite high. This person might actually just be a thorn in everybody's side um, in some capacity. And you always need those kind of characters in, in a story, right? But based on the miniature here uh, for accuracy, I'm kind of thinking rifles because it, we do have a miniature with a rifle. So I'm going to put rifles on this character. For communication, our communication was a one, which is still um, average for uh, player characters. Um, and I want to say probably uh, deception focus, um, maybe even uh, persuasion a little bit. We'll go with deception and persuasion. And this person could actually be a spy, which would be very interesting. Um, constitution. Uh, tolerance, running, stamina, or swimming. <clears throat> I'm going to go with tolerance. And I say that because how interesting would it be if this is a spy and they have a higher tolerance to maybe uh, drinking alcohol or whatever, and, the, and they try to out-drink uh, whoever they might be trying to gain or, or glean information from. Clive. Hi, Clive. Nice to see you. Um, saying hi to some people in the chat. Uh, dexterity, ac acrobatics, uh, crafting, driving, free fall, initiative, piloting, sleight of hand, stealth. Uh, this individual might just be um, a driver of sorts because they're not going to do free fall or in, uh, anything like that. Um, fighting is a one or is a zero. Um, I'm going to go with uh, probably light weapons. So pistols and such like that. Intelligence, we have a one. And um, I'm going to go with evaluation and possibly security as a eval security. Perception is zero. Uh, perception, I'm going to give them. Um, Intuition, strength. So strength is a zero, but they have climbing, intimidation, jump, and jumping and might. Um, I don't see this individual be someone that jumps or has a lot of might because it is a zero. But maybe uh, we can go with intimidation. And then willpower, courage, faith, or self-discipline. We have a minus two. I kind of want to say that. Uh, if they do have a focus, it might be encourage because they want to be more courageous, but they always seem to just seem to fail. <clears throat> hey, Michael, and uh, um, we are doing the Expanse uh, RPG by Green Ronin. Green Ronin. Uh, step two abilities. We've done that. Origin. So we're going to choose a place of origin. Where is where is our character? From They could be from Mars, they could be from a uh, station on the belt of the asteroids between Mars and Earth, or we could still be from Earth, and uh, I, I'm always a fan of Earth. Um, so what are your guys' thoughts on that? I'm going to go ahead and, uh, where do you want to say this individual is from, but it can be from any one of those three locations. So as you're watching, just kind of shout it out in the chat and let me know where do you want this person to be from. Are they from Earth? Are they from the belt? Are they from Mars? A Mars, um, do they grow up on a colony on Mars? And maybe they aren't trusted and they do find themselves on Earth now? Uh, Sarah says from the belt. Okay. That's not a bad, that's not a bad uh, option. I like that. Uh, born on a uh, belt uh, way station or uh, from a belt way station. 
I don't want to put that. Belt station. Okay, background. Uh, we can choose a background that describes what your character's earlier life was like and capabilities the character gained from it. So, um, based on that, if they are a belter, you were born and raised in the black on a station or a ship and have lived most of, if not all of your life, out in the belt or beyond, separated from death by nothing more than basic support systems your whole life. You've learned to be cautious and aware of your environment. As a belter, your character has the following traits. Your negative gravity is microgravity. Belters are most comfortable on the float and handle moving in free fall easily. You automatically have the dexterity free fall. Conversely, earth normal gravity is crushingly heavy for a belter. Oh, that's kind of neat. All right, so for dexterity, we do have free faller. So we'll get rid of that. You're more comfortable in the float. That's kind of an interesting uh, concept. What's up, Carrie? Carrie's with us. All right, so um, by being there, we also, um, you speak Belter Creole, a combination of loan words and phrases from various languages combined with gestures useful com for communicating while wearing a vac suit and unable to speak. All right. Speak Creole, Belter Creole. Um, I'm gonna put that up here. Belters tend to be tall and willowy as a result of being raised in low and micro gravity. Uh, reg uh, regimens of bone density drugs and gen uh, genetic treatments are needed to keep Belters healthy. And some Belters have minor physical abnormalities because of this. Belters often have a diverse ethnic heritage given the melting pot of the belt with ancestors from many different earth cultures. Okay. Interesting. A belter station, maybe um, that will help with our name. Think about the whole melting pot aspect and uh, I'm wondering um, what kind of physical abnormalities this individual might have. Maybe. Uh, the joint spaces have, because of the microgravity, not been um, compressed as they would be in a normal gravity situation. So maybe our, our appendages are a little longer than a normal um, earth or human uh, would have. To, to include fingers, everything where a joint would be, it's a little bit more expanded. Um, Carrie says, so he's a space yeehaw? Yeah, he's a space yeehaw. Uh, stake him? Like, stake him like as in the, the restaurant or the, the little fast food things? Stake him? All right, so next uh, it, it tells us to go into the background. Characters do not spring from nowhere fully formed. Their stories start somewhere and they had a life of and experiences prior to the start of the story being told around the game table. This is the character's background. Backgrounds are broad, broad by design. They offer room for deciding exactly what a given background um, uh, might be. They're in, intended to offer inspiration as to your character's history, early life, and personality. All right, so I'm going to just erase a bunch of this stuff because the background is actually going to fit. So social class, it has a roll 2d6. And the a corresponding number will give us a, a class origin for social class. Five, six, seven, eight. So an eight puts us at lower class as a belter. So we're uh, lower class. So we probably had to fight our ways out of the lower class or, or something to be able to get into something else. Um, determine your character's background involves two roles. First, roll in the social class table for your character's origin, which we have done. Once you have that result, roll on the appropriate backgrounds table for that social class. So if your character is middle class, roll 1d6 on the middle class table and record the result. Um, you can just choose your character's social class background or both rather than rolling on the tables. Your character's background provides the following benefits. All right. So on our lower class, we roll 1d6. 
And we got a two. A one and a two is military. He has a military background, or uh, profession, or background, sorry. Uh, military background. So, yes. I can see that based on the imagery here, that we would probably have something. Uh, a poor miner. Um, in that, that, the, the other three backgrounds we have are, mili are, are laborer and urban, so it's a total of three. Military, laborer, urban. Um, let's see here. The exact nature of the social class, oh, social class varies. Um, so, background descriptions as we find military benefits. So we get to roll 2d6, and then we get to add some stat conditions and other things. Um, for, for our benefit. So, what do we get there? A five. A five gives us a focus, communication, leadership. All right, so under communication, our focus is leadership. So maybe they were like a platoon commander or a special ops individual. Okay. And Okay. So yeah, we get that. Neat. And then our profession, our current profession, we get to roll on a 1d6, and we have six choices, or six options that will be available to us. Um, better, poor, minor. Um, is athlete, soldier, investigator, technician, clergy, or negotiator. So his current profession, when, he, when they enter into our story, is going to be a technician. Which is good because our character's intelligence, we did get a, a bonus of one, which might fall under that. So let's take a look at the profession for technician. You fix things. Whether you're a mechanic, maintenance technician, or even work in information technologies, people depend on you to keep it working. You might work in vast server farms, in lightless tunnels, in massive factories, or in a nondescript office. These are all points where you maintain part of the system's vast infrastructure. Focus, you get intelligence, engineering, or technology. I'm going to go engineering for intelligence. So we're going to erase that. I kind of jumped ahead on that one. Um, we're going to go with engineering. Because I figure being raised in the belt and out, on the, out in that area, uh, an engineer is going to be maybe a little bit more important. But we're an old engineer with a talent, expertise, hacking, or a talent being expertise, hacking, or maker. <clears throat> Interesting. I kind of think we should go with talent hacking. A data miner. There we go. <laughs> That could be it. They, they do run a data mining uh, thing on the belt that is um, capturing content or uh, information being transferred between Mars and Earth. And uh, this individual could be somehow snagging that information. All right. Get rid of some of this other stuff here. All right. Then there's. Discovering what our character's drive is. What What is that which makes our character want to do the things they do? Um, we get to roll 1d6. Uh, roll on column 1. 46 is the is, uh, roll on column 2. All right. So first roll to find out which column we're going to roll on. A 4. So we're going to be able to roll on column 2. Our second roll on that is then going to be a 6. It says we're a visionary, is our drive. Maybe we see something that is uh, the future, based on the information that we are gathering. Visionary, you have a vision to share with the world, sometimes whether the world wants it or not. 
This vision might be your unique artistic expression, a personal philosophy, or religious or spiritual, uh, spiritually driven. But you're driven to share it regardless of the risks. Quality faith in your vision and its ability to reach the right people. So we have a quality of faith. Downfall, zealotry. Your vision becomes confused with the absolute truth. We are visionary. Um, which might lead you to offer it where it is unwelcome or to try and eliminate other visions you see as false or competition to yours. Alternatively, your downfall is doubt, where you experience a crisis of faith and or uncertainty as to how to follow your vision or if you should continue to follow it at all. You have a talent in artistry, oratory, or performance. I want to probably talk about, I think, oratory? What do you guys think? Or is he artistically, his, his ability to hack is just artistic in and of itself. What do you all think? There's some pretty good uh, options there. Or is he able to talk about it in such a way that it does potentially inspire others to want to be involved in maybe the, um, the goal that they, they set forth in their vision? Oratory, everybody's saying oratory? Okay, you have oratory talent. All right, and I think if we go back here. Okay, nope, all right, that's okay. So our next part, step seven, is income and, equip and, and equipment. To prepare your character for adventure, determine the character's income based on profession with modifiers from the background, talents, and drive. And then use that income to determine your character's access to equipment. Our starting income based on our social class is um, being a lower class, income score of two. Um, a character's income score is based on social class adjusting by talent or improvements from drive. Uh, and we don't get any improvements on, our, on being a visionary. A character's income score can never fall below negative two, but there is no effective limit to how high an income can increase. Since income score is an abstract concept, it's sometimes difficult to determine exactly how materially well off a character is. All right, so our income score is a two. And I do not see, there it is, income score of a two. And a uh, two get, means that we're kind of struggling financially. Uh, the income tests are used to determine what you can afford and what goods and services can reasonably be accessed. Income score reflects the character or buyer's um, target. So as we're attaining equipment, you do an income test where you roll 3d6 plus your income score versus the cost or pur purchase target number. Um, that's, that's pretty crazy. And you can deplete your income, gain income, and pooling it with other characters or crew members. Um, in the expanse, characters start out with certain basic equipment and possessions as follows. We get our ordinary clothing, any essential tools or items of the character's profession, and any weapons the character has an associated focus or talent for using. So we'd have a rifle and basic clothing. So basically the miniature there. Um, basic clothing and a rifle. I want you all to be thinking about a name for this character. as well cuz i you know as it was saying is the characters on the belt are kind of a mixing uh, melting pot of all the different potential cultures that have been crossed through the belt to mars and back and forth between mars and earth so that's interesting the physical appearance um, we kind of get that in the miniature right now uh, so step 8 secondary abilities and fortune so our secondary abilities are like our defense, our toughness, our speed, and our fortune. Um, and how we get that 
is defense measures how difficult it is to hit your character with attacks in combat. The higher the defense score, the better. Your character's defense score is equal to 10 plus your dexterity score. So 10 plus zero. So our defense is zero, or 10. Yikes. Our speed is, our, is 10 plus our dexterity, so our speed is 10. Our toughness, which is good. Um, our toughness is our constitution score which is A2. And then, um, ouch. Some characters have particular bonuses of defense based on their talents, which we did not get there. Uh, equipment, if we're wearing armor, which we did not get there. That's okay. So finally, or we have two final things, step nine and then step 10. Step nine is our goals and ties. Expand characters have any number of goals, <clears throat> but think of up to three for this character. Goals are often connected with a character's drive, or at least their drive is how they tend to pursue their goals. Ideally, goals should help to define what is important to your character and offer the uh, Game Master inspiration for stories and ways to involve your character in adventures. When considering goals, try to mix a short-term and or long-term goal. One short-term goal are fairly immediate and provide the GM with ways to involve your character into the adventure right away. And the long-term goals obviously help drive the, the, the adventure uh, in a long-term sense. Uh, I just want to say hi to a Pete and Ross and everybody over on Twitch. Uh, sounding like a, a heretical mutant to me. I agree. It does sound like a heretical mutant. This individual is definitely uh, a character that could cause problems. So based on what we've gotten so far, <clears throat> Michael says to convert his, the universe to his religion is a goal. Just pick an Italian first name, Irish middle name, and Japanese last name. And Sarah says, mean, you mean like Marco Seamus Yashimoto? Yes, that is this person's name. It is Marco... Seamus Yashimoto. I love it. So, uh, I, I do like that as a goal, trying to convert others to their um, religion. But what do you guys think of this? Uh, the individual is a hacker. The individual uh, was a prior military uh, person. We know that there's potential for conflict between Earth and Mars. Um, and they are an engineer. So... As a potential short-term goal, we have acquired some information that could be of benefit to either side, Mars or Earth, and we need. We our goal is to get that information, which could either, if given to one side, cause the war; given to the other, could potentially prevent a, a conflict. Um, so, who do we want to be? Do we want to be the person that is, because of our history of being a military soldier type? Do we want to cause conflict so that maybe we could be seen as being valuable again? Or do we want to be the one that is, we don't want to cause a conflict, we want to prevent potential war because we've seen the, we've seen the, the hazards and, the, and, the, and just the gr grit and the grind and the, and the bad sides of conflict. Um, so which side do we want to be? Ooh, he could have been a military chaplain. Oh, yeah. Could have been. All right, so Michael says prevent a war. So we have information to prevent conflict. I think it would be something that the GM would want to uh, say is if you give it to Mars, conflict is, could be prevented. If you give it to Earth, conflict would continue forth. All right, so there's one of our short-term goals. Um, <clears throat> Byron says cause. So we, uh, all right. So we have two, or one for uh, prevent, one for cause. What do y'all think? Do we want to prevent or cause? One more, one more will break the tie. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna write that down. Short term goal. Is are we uh, preventing a war? Or are we causing conflict? Uh-oh. 
All right, Sarah says cause. So our goal is to cause conflict. So we have two causes, one prevent. All right, so our goal is to prevent or to cause conflict based on information. All right. Our other short-term goal, what do we want to be? Do we want to find an association with the military, uh, re, kind of reinsert ourselves back in the military as being useful? Or um, do we want to be uh, something else? But a religious, a truly religious person might want to prevent. That's true. A truly religious person might want to prevent if that was this person's background. We were, our background and profession is military and technician. So we are probably some sort of like, um, we could have been someone that laid mines or did like um, Army Corps of Engineers that helped build stations out on the belt uh, during the initial expanse as we grew beyond Earth's, uh, you know, maybe that's kind of a, the thing that he fell into because his family on the belt through a, a few generations um, that's kind of where their training led them uh, to be, where they would be the ones, because they are good at free fall, they are, they're good in the float. They can build better connections uh, between uh, meteors or, or asteroids or whatever. Or yeah, maybe in, in that uncovered some, also could have during a uh, engineering um, build, may have come up across some sort of weird space thing on, a, on one of the asteroids that made them question their faith and now they follow this new faith based on some something they found uh, on an asteroid. I like that too. So maybe, let's go with that. Um, not only do they have information that could cause conflict between one or the other, but they have a, a need to um, spread the word of a new religion based on information gained during one of the, uh, a repair of a station on a asteroid at, uh, on Earth, some sort of uh, information. And a long-term goal could be, what do you think? Um, uh, to be, to herald in this whole new, this whole new form of religion that could potentially uh, bind both civilizations together. Maybe the, maybe the religion is one that says we were never meant to leave Earth and we must return. And all that do not, all that, uh, all of humanity that does not return to, the, to Earth uh, should be destroyed. Something like that. That's actually pretty scary. But I, I'm sure wars have been started for less. Um... Humans should not be a part of the uh, sh should not be expanding beyond the beyond Earth. The Gospel of Cthulhu. Uh, Sarah says, uh, "Water is life. More water for the belt, less tariffs." Huh. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So that basically takes us to our, our final, so that we have goals and ties. <clears throat> the ties part of it, while some role-playing games start the character off not knowing each other, thrown uh, together by circumstances, the group's cohesion is stronger. Because we're not building any other characters today, we're just looking at the basic aspect of building a character for the Expanse. Um, I will say next week at Origins, I will be sitting down with uh, someone from Green Ronin and we'll be doing another character build with them for the Expanse. And maybe at that point, we can pull, we'll pull out this character and make the character have a tie in with this one. Um, but the last part, step 10, is we need to give this individual a name and we've already done so with Marco Seamus Yashimoto. So... Uh, The spice is life, the spice must flow. <laughs> I love it. All right. So that pretty much is uh, uh, the down and dirty based off the 10 steps. 
of character generation for the Expanse. We did not uh, necessarily go into the full equipment other than basic clothes and a rifle. Um, but you can get more information by going to uh, Green Ronin's website. They do have a downloadable PDF as a, a quick start guide so you can get a, another feel of the game. Um, this uh, game is going to be a lot of fun for those of you that are fans of The Expanse or just fans of science fiction and space type role-playing games. Uh, the book uh, in the Kickstarter or some of the items that are probably going to come out with it are these cool like cards that give different like conditions, actions, a combat tracker, um, all um, set up so that you can use dry erase on it, which is really nice. They have interlude activities, so between adventures uh, and game sessions, you have interlude activities that can help uh, build more development around your character. Um, melee stunts, gun stunts, chase stunts, uh, general combat and grappling stunts, all sorts of stunts, because uh, it is supposed to be like a cinematic play. Um, and then, of course, there's always the beautiful um, uh, GM screen, which shows a ship going through the asteroid area. Um, it looks like someone orbiting another planet, and then possibly the red planet of Mars right there with a, with a settlement in the background. So it's pretty cool. So the Expanse. If uh, it's something that you're into, after you've checked out the downloadable free PDF over at Green Ornine, go to your friendly local game store and let them know, hey, I want to get this when it comes out so they, they will be aware and be able to order just enough for you and your, your, uh, your RPG party, your group, your role-playing group, and have a fun time playing it. Uh, I'm Rick. This has been Building Character. I will see you all next week at Origins. We'll be broadcasting live from the show floor all week long. So until then, maybe, hopefully, I'll see you at the game store. Watching Building Character. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.